Hello, and thanks for tuning in. In this review, I'm going to be taking a look at the second film from horror master Wes Craven. And now, The Hills Have Eyes. The film is about a family driving through the desert for a vacation in California when their car breaks down. They find themselves stranded and are soon terrorized by a group of mutant cannibals living in the nearby caves. The film is loosely based on a real-life clan of cannibalistic serial killers from Scotland in the early 1400s. Craven would also find a great deal of inspiration from Toby Hooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In fact, he was such a fan of the film, he hired production designer Bob Burns. As a result, the props and wardrobe look remarkably similar. In fact, there are even a few reconfigured props from Texas Chainsaw in the family's cave. Needless to say, the film's production design is top-notch. The movie has an incredibly grainy picture, which does add to the overall raw, aggressive tone of the film. However, it also leaves some of the colors a bit washed out. This isn't a major issue for me, and I'm not going to be taking anything off for it. Overall, I enjoy how the film looks. The acting in the film would be somewhat hit or miss. Most of the leads are pretty solid, but there are a few cheesy performances. The cast would also be notable for featuring a young Dee Wallace and introducing horror audiences to Michael Berryman. The desert is used to great effect in this film, almost acting as an additional character. This shouldn't surprise anyone, as the filmmakers actually traveled 30 miles outside of civilization to reach these locations. During the day, temperatures would reach upwards of 120, and once the sun went down, it would drop as low as 30 degrees. Needless to say, the conditions were extreme. There's not much gore in the movie, but what is there is adequate. I will say the blood is too red and looks like paint, though. I always hate that. The film initially received an X rating and had to be heavily censored to receive the coveted R. Unfortunately, it seems all of this extra footage has been lost to time. I would love for a director's cut to surface at some point. As I mentioned, the film has an incredibly raw and aggressive tone throughout. Overall, things progress extremely well, though there are a few slight pacing issues. This is made up for, however, by an immensely satisfying conclusion. Fun fact. The film's original title was Blood Relations. It wasn't until it tested poorly that they tried out different titles. Reportedly, Wes Craven himself was never too big on the title The Hills Have Eyes, but it seems to have worked out in the end. The Hills Have Eyes is without a doubt one of the greatest horror films of the 1970s, if not of all time. While it lacks the sleazy sexuality of its predecessor, Last House on the Left, it more than makes up for that with an incredible setting, excellent production design, and a relentless, unnerving tone. While the film might be a bit too much for some viewers, it's definitely deserving of your time. There's a reason it's stuck around for so long. Go ahead and give it a watch.